why process is preferable to miracles. Can you believe that? That process is more important than miracles. If you go to any church today, let me, yeah, you come. If you go to any church today, this way, this way, so that you, the people will see you, yeah. So if you go to any church today and say, okay, uh, you are a church member, let's say you are the church member, say, what do you prefer? Pick one. Would you prefer miracle or process? I think 90% of people in churches today, they will say, of course, miracle, 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 miracle. And we think that is good. And we think that is the right choice. But that is deception. That is deception. That is deception. That is wrong. And I want to show you today why processes are more valuable than miracles. Processes are more valuable than miracles. Processes are more valuable than miracles. Processes are more valuable than miracles, guys. Processes are more valuable than miracles. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> miracles are from God. We love miracles. We thank God for miracles. God is a miracle worker. And I am a miracle worker. And every Christian is supposed to be a miracle worker. But it is not enough. And it is we, we don't worship miracles. We are not supposed to live by miracles. We are actually supposed to live by principles and procedures. We are supposed to live by process, procedures, and principles. Three Ps. Process, procedures, and principles. We are supposed to live by principles, process, procedures, rather than by miracles. And I'm going to show you the why that uh, why process is more significant, is more relevant, is more is much more preferable to miracles. Why are pros why is process more important than miracles? Thank you. <laughs> People are telling me it's not 90% or 80% that will prefer miracles, but 99%. And let's let's fix this. Let's 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 think about it. Okay. Let's. Uh, let, I'm going to take my time, and I'm going to try my best to go as uh, sm as slowly as I could, so that. <laughs> Uh, so that you will be able to catch up with me, okay, you, with my reasoning. Now, when we talk about processes, what are we talking about? When we talk about procedures, processes, what are we talking about? The reason the, why we talk about processes and procedures, of course, we are talking about things that make people to want to run away from processes and, and procedures. Because when we talk about processes and procedures, we are talking about difficulties. When you talk about processes, you talk about, we want to write this down. When you talk about processes, we are talking about rules, number one. We're talking about rules and laws. And, you know, people don't like to observe rules and laws. People don't like to observe protocols. People don't like to observe rules and laws. So when you can do something without rules and laws, people prefer it. But so that is one of the reasons why uh, why people don't like procedures and processes. Now, but why is it though that rules, proceed, I mean rules and laws, are more important than the absence of rule and law? Okay, let's let's fit, let's start with that. I'm going to give you a lot of things that we are talking about when we talk about processes so let's say okay one of the main important factor in processes is that pro all processes and all procedures have instructions rules and laws instructions rules and laws now so why is it that we say processes therefore are more important than miracles because when you talk about miracles you don't necessarily expect to see laws or rules 
or procedure, I mean, or, or instructions. You just want to go, do what you need to do, you know, give them, so, so your offering, or receive your prayers, and get the anointing, and you expect your miracle, you just get the miracle. If in miracles, it is understood by most people that when they receive a miracle, they don't need to do anything much. So in miracles, you don't need to do too much things. You just need to go and sow the seed or whatever the man of God tells you to do. You just go and show up and then the miracle, you expect the miracle to just come without you doing anything. But why is it that when you need to obey instructions, when you need to obey, rule, obey rules and laws, that is actually better than when you don't need to obey some rules and instructions that when you don't need to observe some uh, some 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 principle some uh, some some instructions and and laws let's say for example let's take societies where there are rules and let's take societies where there are no rules where there are no laws for example can you imagine if you are living in England let's imagine London can you imagine that you come to London and there are no instructions on the walls and in the streets, no signboards, no street addresses <laughs> in London. Come to London, no street addresses, no instructions, no rules, no street addresses, no street lights, because street lights are rules, street lights are laws. Street lights are instructions. You have the red, the red, you have the yellow, you have the green. Those are instructions. So can you imagine yourself landing in London in a city of 8 million or so people and there, no street light, no uh, street signs, no names of the streets, no numbers in the houses. You would think and no driving instructions. <laughs> no driving instructions. <laughs> you will think you are in Lagos. <laughs> you such a dichotomy and difference between the developed nations and the underdeveloped nations or developing nations. So you, I just told you one thing. If that one thing is removed from the developed world, if instructions, rules, laws, and order is re are removed from the developed nations, from New York, for example, or from... Washington DC for example if only one thing is removed pro process procedures which includes laws rules principles instructions if those only one thing is removed only one thing is removed see the chaos see the catastrophe see the the the, the you will run away from England you will run away from London. You will run away from New York. You will run away from those places. And you will think you are back in Lagos. <laughs> so the, that means the only difference right now between the developed nations and the underdeveloped nations is the strong presence of instructions. Is the strong presence of procedures. Strong presence of the, pre the procedures. 
strong presence of procedures. So if only that one thing is removed from developed countries, you, you will get the chaos, the kind of chaos that you, the same kind of chaos that you have in Lagos, that you have in the, 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 the undev underdeveloped nations of this world, you will get them in those same countries. Why? Just because of one thing, no procedures. But people in Africa, in Africa, would rather go to churches, they would rather go to camp meetings, they would rather go to the mountains, they would rather go and fast and pray for 10 days, 20 days, 40 days, 2 weeks, 100 days. They would rather go and be praying instead of going to develop structures, I mean to develop processes. Instead of going to devote themselves to how to find instructions, processes to the problem of transportation, instead of going to develop procedures and processes that will need that will be needed for the transportation system of the land, we will be going to churches to pray that God should come and fix Nigeria. <laughs> oh my God! Oh. <laughs> Our people are so blinded by religiosity, by religious foolishness. We are just being destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge is killing us. We are dying. Instead of us to go and do something about the challenges of our economy, about the challenges of our nation, we are going to spend months and months <laughs> In prayer houses, in churches, instead of us to just go sit down and work and work our processes, we are going to look for miracles. <laughs> Jesus. And when someone like me talk about this, they think I'm crazy. And they think I've lost the Lord. They think I'm backsliding. They think I'm the one who has missed it. If you go to my country today, you will find so many millions of people, millions of people, not just thousands of people, millions of people will be fasting and praying. They will be going from one prayer house to the other. They are they are jamming. They are they are all over some mountains and some camps, and they are out there. They are millions. They are praying that God should come and fix the country. They are praying that God should come and reduce the economic chaos. They are praying that God should bring a solution to the recession. Can you imagine if all these people would go to work, work on one thing only, work on processes, on procedures, on system of order, on system of getting order, instructions, processes put in everything. Can you imagine if we come up with procedures and processes for our transport system? Can you imagine if we come up with processes and procedures for our markets? Markets that are so chaotic, noise everywhere. Can you imagine if we come up with some processes and procedures for those? Can, can you imagine how much progress we immediately experience? Can you imagine if we come up with pro processes and instructions? If one million people go to work, we will get answer. If one million, if all those millions that are in the mountain. If all those millions that are on those mountains would just be giving instructions to go and work out procedures and 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 and, and principles and uh, you know uh, processes of order in every particular sphere of life, can you imagine? We will find answers to all our questions very fast. So, but instead of us. 
going to do, yes, it's tedious to sit down, to go and work out processes. It's always difficult. Process is always connected with difficulty. Process is always a painful process to go through. Processes are always, you know, they're always exciting. You need to excite yourself. You need to really work. You need to, to work hard on them. But can you imagine if we work out just a process, a system, whereby we only have street light instructions and street lights for every city, for every city and every town in Nigeria. That's just one answer. Just one, just instruction and process for one question. Just one question. Can you imagine if all the millions of people that are everywhere praying and fasting and looking for some instant miracles at yeah, this time of the year? All those millions of people, if they're just giving one instruction to go and think and come up with ideas of how to develop processes for a, a different segment of the society, just like I just told you the difference that if, there, if those processes and procedures are removed from European countries, from uh, developed countries, that those developed countries will become chaotic, just like Nigeria, just like Lagos. The same thing, so we should know that if we now bring in those procedures, if we bring in those instructions, if we work out the principles and the rules and put them in place in our society, that means that the very opposite of what we have now will happen. That means that instead of chaos, we are going to have order. That means that instead of destruction and instead of poverty, we are going to have prosperity just by bringing one thing back processes and procedures. If we bring just process and procedures back, we are going to gain a lot of those things that people in Europe don't have. Or that people in Europe do have, sorry. So, my message today is, why process is more important than miracles? Because when you just go to the mountain and ask for miracles, Yes, miracle could come, but you don't know how to do it. You don't know the procedures. You don't know the rules. You don't know the order. You don't know the steps. So if miracle doesn't come the next day, you are helpless. You are helpless again. You, then, then every time you have to be waiting and be and be agitated and be looking for miracle again. It's better for you just to learn how to do that miracle one time. Just one time to learn how to, you know, come about, how to develop your miracle. Let me give you an example, for example. Let me give you an example. Uh, there is a scripture in Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 8, when uh, after the disciples have been, you know, you know, after they have been, you, know, you remember, God told uh, the first church in Jerusalem that they should anoint some apostles to take care of the of the of the widows and to take care of the feeding of the widows and the you know that is also order that is also processes there so one of those people that was uh, appointed to put process in place in the acts of the apostle was philip now that at the point god now sent that philip out to go and minister in samaria and why philip was ministering in samaria uh the power of God broke down, miracles started happening, and all those things started happening. Great stuff. Miracles were happening, and while the miracles were happening, God did even a more you know, spectacular miracle. God showed um, Philip that there is an Ethiopian uh, you know, eunuch somewhere there in the wilderness that is on his way to Africa, to the continent of Africa, that go and preach the gospel to him. He's trying to read the Bible, but he doesn't understand what he's reading. And one thing happened. Something happened at that moment. Philip does not really know where this uh, Ethiopian was. He didn't get an address and he didn't have a navigatory system. So no navigatory system, no car, no plane, no map, nothing. But the Spirit of God transported him. He was teletransported. So teletransportation is one of the greatest miracles that happened in the New Testament. That particular miracle of uh, Philip getting, it was, all, it, was in, it was in Samaria and all of a sudden he was teletransported from Samaria 
to the wilderness we exactly where this man was where the eunuch uh, the ethiopian eunuch was that was a one of the most spectacular miracles in the bible now when i was a young christian and a young pastor i used to beg god <laughs> ignorance by god help us because i had read somewhere where somebody wrote that in the last days before Jesus comes back that there will be miracles like that that God is going to be transporting his men of God that, that God is going to be teletransporting them from one continent to the other and they, they will be in America today and they will just be teletransported to Africa the next, the next hour that they are, in, they are in England today and the next minute they are in Japan and all that and so I was saying, wow, that would be great. I want to witness that. And I want to be part of those miracles. Yeah, I was so ignorant. I was just like all of you. I was just like regular people. I was praying, praying and fasting that, oh, it is my generation. I'm going to be part of that. That's in Acts chapter 8, verse 29. I'm going to be part of this miracle. I'm going to be te teletransported. Oh, wow, how would that happen? You know, teletransportation has been happening. If if you are an African, if you are an African, and and uh, you know, and you are a little bit exposed to the history of the African continent, and especially if you've heard a lot of stories about the dark world in Africa, about the uh, witchcraft in Africa, you will discover. You know, and this is not gainsay. I mean, teletransportation is a very common thing in the mythology, in the African mythology. And in almost every uh, battle stories or witchcraft battles, encounters, you will always hear, even on a daily basis, even up to now in our in our you know country and in our uh, newspapers you will hear uh, stories of some magical powers that make some wishes to travel or some wizard to travel or they were they crashed or something happened so teletransportation is a normal thing in africa so it's easier for an african to believe and to imagine what happened to philip so i was thinking oh now we are going to be able to do that without the power of evil without powers of darkness we are going to be able to do this with the power of god and god is going to use us. and that shows that you are anointed that right now no man of god is teletransporting so now that is going to show real power real anointing one of the only other person that i know in the history of the church that was used like that through teletransportation was uh, uh John G. Lake, John G. Lake, yes. But, you know, but otherwise, not too many, it's not too common in the body of Christ right now. And I used to pray like that. You know, right now, I stopped praying that prayer. You know why I stopped praying that prayer? Because it is easy, it, it is a, an easy thing to get teletransported. But to be teletransported is inferior than to build planes, jets, you know, to build hyperjets, to build you no know, uh, uh, hypersonic jets. These hypersonic jets are traveling, they are doing things taking you from one continent to the other. It is much more God would rather give. So that, you know, so instead of praying for teletransportation, what, what I've discovered right now is that God is wise. Why is it that God is not throwing away that power everywhere? Why is it that God is not just giving any, um, every anointed man of God the manifestation, the working of miracle to be teletransported? Why is, we, and we have been praying, fasting, praying and fasting for this. Why is this not happening? Why is this not happening? Where is the power of God? And we will be in, in Negro and praying and begging God to send the power. But God is smarter than us. God is wiser than us. And God will not allow that to happen. The reason why God will not allow that to happen is that God wants us to engage our minds. God wants us to figure out the process. In this case, this is an example of why process is more important than miracles. So let me now show you the contrast. What happened to Philip? That was a miracle. Now, and what happened to the, uh, the right brothers, the right brothers that came up with the plane, that design plane, that gave us the plane that we are using today. That was process. 
Now, before the Wright brothers, there were so many other people who started the process. And it, it, the process probably lasted the period of 20 to 50 years. For the, it's a long process for humanity to learn to develop uh, supersonic planes and fast planes and that would go from one continent to the other and in a matter of hours and days. You know, it took process lasted for 50 years. So the process of developing planes it was lasted like maybe 50 years, but it is still preferable to learn the process, to learn to produce planes than to just be flying. Now, you tell me, all those people who have been flying in Africa, all those witchcraft people, in, uh, they told me, uh, they are writing the Yoruba something here, I don't even, Egbe and Ofe, 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 in Yoruba means teletransportation. Well, I don't know the word, I've forgotten, maybe, <laughs> maybe something, I don't know. But can you imagine all those, our forefathers and grandfathers, they had been practicing this, but they were practicing it by supernatural power. They were practicing it by power of witchcraft. But they have not learned procedures. They have not learned procedures of putting this in practical means. They don't know the science. They don't know the science. They have not developed a procedure for it. Can you imagine if our witchcraft people could stop and, ask, and use that knowledge, that supernatural knowledge, that witchcraft power, and develop it into a procedure, into principles, into procedures, principles, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, and, you know, make it actually a scientific discovery. Can you imagine if that kind of science would come from Africa, that people could be teletransported and instead, you know, and develop it. Can you imagine if Africa has been the one flat, you know, that came up with, 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 uh, with planes and can even up to now, no African country produces planes. Why is it that we cannot produce planes? Because we, you know, it needs processes. You need to know the knowledge. You need to be able to follow the procedures. You need to be able to, you know, to, to follow the process. But what have our grandfathers done? Our grandfathers, they have relied on miracles, on miraculous flying, on miraculous, you know, manifestation of just, you know, doing some shant incantation or some chanting and then get yourself teletransported. So we are uh, you know more reliant on that and when you are reliant on that you are a loser you lose because those people who know the witchcraft of doing that they didn't commit it to paper they did not co uh, no convert it to processes and procedures procedures and when there are no processes and procedures it means nobody can do it it cannot be you no know, repeated by everybody it cannot be followed by everybody ordinary people cannot just apply that principle and fly as well so that is why knowledge is much more pre you know, preferable Proces processes are better than miracles so if you ask me today oh uh, come come again so let me say this is the church uh, the body of christ yeah uh, olena here uh, so helen here let's say she's representing christ i mean the body of christ you know what the body of Christ would have chosen today? The body of Christ would have chosen that, oh, why should I use 50 years to develop an airplane? And then you have to get pilots, then you have to get mechanics, then you have to repair the plane, then you have to keep the plane working, then you have to put oil inside, then you have to do all that. Why? Let me just say, just tell me the incantation. Just tell me the prayer to pray. Just tell me the anointing. Ooh, I just fly. You know, but that is silly. That is an immediate gain, an immediate um, gratification, but then you don't have a, a, a sustaining and everlasting system of everybody being able to enjoy it and everybody being able to practice it. And the only few ones who are practicing it, they will die off and then the thing will die. Why is it that even though those tele, I mean, uh, teletransportation is common in Africa, but only with few people who are in the, in the, in the, in the, in the occultic world why is it that they don't they cannot commit it into a system commit it into a process or that will be common to everybody and it will be enjoyed by everybody that everybody will be able to use that to fly and be able to do you know uh, 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 any exploits that they want in the world can you imagine if we could come up with that kind of with that kind of wisdom and that gift to humanity but we don't, we can't because it's based on miracles. It's based on some supernatural things. That's why God founded the earth 
on and committed the earth to principles. God funded the earth and committed the earth to procedures and processes. God himself placed the earth on, upon laws. He funded the earth upon rules, statutes, and co commandments. He did not place the earth to be operated by supernatural means. He did not place the earth to be operated by miracles. The earth is not run by miracles. Miracles are the exceptions. Miracles are not the rule. Miracles are not the order of the day. So when you today, are, you are calling yourself a believer, a Christian, and you are still going to look for miracles, to look for wonders, to look for one wonders of the, you are shitting on God. You are shitting on yourself. You are shitting on humanity. You are shitting on your posterity. You are cheating on your future generation. You are depriving people of the processes that you could have come up with. You are depriving people of the processes you could have developed. You are depriving people of the answers you could have come up with for different spheres of life. When you just rely on, on, on miracles, just like our forefathers, they relied on supernatural manifestation to be teletransported they deprived us of planes. They deprived us of supersonic jets. They deprived us of the ability to be able to fly. They make us slaves. They make us redundant. They make us dependent on the Western world. They make us dependent on the broad, on the right brothers. They make us to be going to buy air ticket now from American Airlines or from European Airlines because they have not given unto us what they could have given unto us. They have not taken their time to commit their knowledge, to commit their secrets into paper. They have not committed it into processes. They have not committed it into procedures. If they had committed this, if they had converted their knowledge into procedures or into, into processes, we today would have been the one that is giving the world the flying objects and the, 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 the flying planes, the 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 flying you know you know things the technology we would have been the one to give the technology to the world but because we were relying they are still relying up to today on supernatural you know teletransportation we are inferior we are you know behind we are ignorant and we are not on top so every time you depend on miracles, every time you are just waiting for miracles, you are depriving yourself. You are depriving your future. You are depriving your children. You are stealing from your children the knowledge that you could have given to them, the knowledge on how to do it. For example, let me give you another example. Let me use you as an example. This is uh, Mar Mary here, Maria. Let's say... Maria, you have the healing power, all right? Okay. Healing power to heal people. You lay hands on me for healing, all right? You say, oh, pray. You pray for me, I get healed, all right? Come. So if you pray for me, I get healed. And everybody is talking about Maria. She's a miracle worker. She raised the dead. You know, my hair got open. My eyes got open. Those are miracles. Beautiful. But when she dies... All that disappears. So what should we prefer? What is better? Now, miracle healing power that she has, the miracle working power that Maria has, that is miracle. But what is better than that? You know, you know what is better than the miracle, the healing power that she has? Is proce procedure or process. So what is process as against healing? The healing, the miracle working power. What is the uh, process? The process is the knowledge. If you have the knowledge to build hospitals, how many people have the knowledge to set up their own hospital from A to Z? So for you, if, what would you prefer? If I tell you today to choose, is, is it miracle working power that you need or the knowledge and the know-how? To be able to build general hospitals, to be able to build the you no know, no sophisticated hospitals, hospitals that will be able to cure cancer, hospitals that will be able to cure everything. You know, Christians will take miracles. Christians will go and be asking for miracle working power. They will be going to the mountain to ask for miracle working power. They will be going to fast for 100 days, 50 days, 40 days to ask for miracle working power. Instead of committing that time. Those 40 days, those who have 100 days that they are using in the mountain, instead of committing into research, instead of doing research, 
instead of doing no no instead of studying technology instead of so, studying the science instead of studying the procedure of setting up hospitals instead of setting instead of you know coming up with procedures of curing all diseases instead of knowing how to build hospitals how to do surgery how to raise surgeons how to develop your doctors how to raise up you know uh, workers which is more sustainable process is always more sustainable than miracles process is much more superior than miracles so when we teach our people to run after miracles we deprive them of their future because if she is doing miracle now she could only be in one place at one time just like with jesus jesus did miracle but he was only in one place at one time not just like jesus jesus died and he was not nobody is able to do miracles like jesus had done before so when he goes everything goes so why is it that god does not make miracle the order of the day through which we live by which we live he only makes miracle be to be between zero to two percent probability the probability of miracle in running the earth is only between zero to two percent not more than two percent why is it that god is not making miracles to be you know everywhere abundant everywhere because that god knows that it is counterproductive god knows that miracles are only needed in exceptional cases god knows that miracles are only needed only in cases whereby where mm, you where the, uh, there are no help just out of his mercy and out of his love he intervenes with miracles but miracles should not be the order of the day miracle is not what we're supposed to live by we are all supposed to live by processes by principles and by procedures we are supposed to learn how these things work and be able to commit it into a system so for example a miracle worker can only be in one place can only do things when he is available when he's, when he's not sleeping when is not dead when he's there but a hospital could be built in every village a hospital could be built in every city you could find the technology the process of setting up hospitals and hospitals will always be there hospitals will always be available thousands of people could always go through hospitals but what have we done we have been doing miracle working in africa for so long it's time for us to stop it's good god will still do miracles i do miracles i believe in miracles but we should teach people that it is not the order of the of the day it is not the way things are supposed to be we are supposed to teach our people to go to schools and study the science the procedures the rules of setting up hospitals of getting knowledge of getting you know, the, the know-how of being able to build systems and be able to use this and set up and bring everlasting solution instead of temporary solutions that miracles give miracles are inferior to processes Please, if you have not yet shared this link, if you have not yet shared this link, I want you to go and right, right now and go and uh, share the link, play and share the video. You have a share button under your video. Go and find the share button under your video and let's spread the word. Let's go and share this message right now. Many of you have not yet shared it. Some of you have shared it, but most of you have not. Let's go. Uh, and share these messages and write something when you are sharing the messages make sure that you write something for people make sure that you write uh, uh you write something for for people let your people say it. let people uh know why they should listen to this message let them know let them, let us spread this message like white fire let us set our people free let us set our nations free let them set, set, set christianity free miracles are supposed to follow us we are not supposed to be looking for miracles miracles are supposed to follow us we are not supposed to follow miracles we are supposed to learn how to develop structures how to develop principles how to develop procedures how to develop processes and that is what is more everlasting and that is what is more uh, 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 predictable and that is what is more reliable than anything else so I hope that those examples of teletransportation and of hospitals 
will give us understanding why is it that God is not making miracles to be abiding everywhere. If God had made miracles to be everywhere, every minute, every second, nobody would have walked. If God had made miracles to be everywhere, every second so common, nobody would have walked, nobody would have, you know, been, you know, detailed, nobody would have been developed, no country would have been developed. Everybody would have just been waiting and relying on miracles. As a, as a result, miracle therefore we give you, you know, a, a laziness mentality. When you depend on miracles, therefore you become lazy. Can you imagine it when miracles are everywhere? Who would like to go to work? There will be no work. So miracle will keep the ability of the nation to work. Because we are expecting miracles. Miracles will deprive of, of diligence. We will not need to be diligent because we'll just do a little bit and be expecting miracles. Miracles will deprive us of industrialization. We will not need to develop industries because we will just expect God to supply all our needs. So we don't have industrialization. So we are not developed. We are, there are no industries. There are no bridges. There are no roads. There are no infrastructures. There are no amenities because are, we don't see the need for it. We are waiting that God will come or somebody will come or something will happen instead of us to take charge of our lives instead of us to take charge of our destiny instead of us to take responsibility and in those societies where miracles are too emphasized there are no responsibilities people are people are deprived of responsibility people give their responsibility to other people People give the up their responsibility in expectation of miracle, in expectation of help coming from somewhere. They were expecting somebody to do for them what they could do for themselves. They are expecting God to help, come and help them and do something. So they don't take responsibility for what they need to take responsibility for. They are expecting somebody, a friend or relative or neighbor, other people to come and help them. Instead of them to take charge and help themselves because they know and that God, they are praying and God is going to send somebody. It is counterproductive when we are waiting for, for, for miracles. Miracles, are, they, 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 they reduce us. They, 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 they belittle us. We, we dehumanize ourselves by waiting for miracles all the time. It deprives us of diligence. It deprives us of development. It deprives us of technological growth. It deprives us of technological know-how. It deprives of, us of, of effective, you know, you know, educational system. Because the educational system, people, they are not searching. They are not, it deprives us of resources. It deprives us of, tech, you know, no, technological know-how. Because we are waiting for supernatural manifestation one way or the other we need to set the church free from this deception <laughs> like i said i'm not saying i'm against miracles or god is not miracle worker but miracles should come only after we have done our best only after we have given our best god sees that we have done our best then he will do his own best as well so what is, when we talk about procedures, what are we talking about again? When we talk about procedures, we are talking about problems. We are talking about difficulties. We are talking about uh, puzzles that need to be unpuzzled. Uh, unpuzzled. So that be, because it, you know, uh, 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 processes always involve difficulties. Processes always involve uh, challenges that need to be resolved. Many people run away from processes. But in the real sense, it is the challenges that you meet in the process of, you know, following the procedure. It is those challenges that later on make you. It is those challenges that determine who you are. It is those challenges that develop your muscles. It is those challenges that give you the know-how. It is those challenges that help you to find answers. It is those challenges that help you to find solution. It is those challenges that you encounter in the process of going through something that make you who you are supposed to be. It is those challenges that you make, that you find that bring a 
about discovery. Every discovery is based on the difficulties that people have made, the people have encountered. The difficulties that you have encountered in following processes, they are for your good. They make you to invent things. They make you to invent solutions. If you are process-oriented, you know that you are following this process, you find an obstacle in front of you, you know that you must design a, design a way to be able to remove the obstacle. But if you are just miracle-oriented, instead of designing a way to remove the obstacle, instead of finding solution, instead of coming up with, with, with technological know-how or with solution that will be able to resolve the problem, you are praying to God and to, to be able to take you over it. Then you don't have a solution. The, the obstacle will still be there. The hindrance will still be there for the next generation that are coming. They will still be facing the same problem. But if you sit down and, you know, go through the process and develop a, a lasting solution once and for all, then you remove the obstacle once and for all. And the old generation that are coming, they know the technology. They know the way. They know or the procedure of how to resolve such problems next time. So, if people are running away from problems, people are running away from difficulties, that is why people avoid processes. But it is the problems and difficulties that you encounter in the process of doing something that makes you a specialist. You only become a specialist when you encounter problems and you practice yourself in doing it. It is practice that makes perfect. And practice is a word that is coming from processes also. Practice is part of processing, but the process. So when you are practicing something, when you are doing research, and when you are practicing yourself in this thing, you become an expert. But when you are waiting on miracles, you don't practice anything. We just expect miracle. Miracle comes once and for all, and you just boost you. But you have the same problem tomorrow. You will not be able to know how to resolve it. You then you have to be asking for another miracle. But because miracle makes you a slave, miracle makes you incapacitated, miracle makes you to be to, to be in, to be incapable of really bringing everlasting solution but once you have practiced once you have done it once and for all then you know how to do it next time again for example I know a lot of I'm a pastor myself and I know a lot of pastors who are always praying for revival but I'm going to write a book soon why I don't pray for revival and why I don't believe you should and I think I will do one, one day I'm going to do a series here on this platform while I'm going to talk, talk about that. Why you should not pray for revival. Why we don't pray for revival and why you should not pray for revival. And um, of course, I, had a mes I have a message like that already on my, uh, in one of my lists here, on my, in one of my teachings. Uh, if you go through the list of my teachings when I was teaching about uh, prayers and the kingdom of God, yeah, I say, why I don't pray for revival? You can go and listen to the prayer series. And, uh, yeah, so, but I want to write a whole book and I want to, to do a whole series on why we don't pray for revival, why it is foolishness to pray for revival. I don't pray for revival, I bring revival. I don't pray for revival, I carry revival. I don't pray for revival, I do revival. Why? Because I've discovered the know-how of how to bring revival. It doesn't matter where I go. It doesn't matter where I come to. I will bring revival there. I will do revival. Why? Because I know how to bring about revival. But people who, but I know a lot of colleagues of mine, pastors, who are praying for revival all the day, every day, every year, they are praying for revival and they never have that revival. Because they are praying for God to do something supernatural for God to bring that revival by himself. But instead of you praying for that, that God should bring revival by himself, 